Hi everyone, Dr. Joey here, and thank you so much for selecting this video to learn a little bit more about COVID-19. Before we begin, I have a very quick announcement. This is a new YouTube channel, and as such, there's only a few videos before now, and those videos were aimed at a specific group of investors. This particular video is part of a three-part series, and it's important to me as it is the first video that is aimed to be shared with the masses. In other words, I made this video and the subsequent videos that are part of this series to be available so that anyone who wants to learn more about COVID-19 can do so. And at the end of this three-part series, that anyone who watches them all will understand the full spectrum of COVID-19 progression from the beginning stages of first catching or being infected with the SARS-CoV-2 virus to the latter more critical stages of the COVID-19 progression. I hope to hear from you in the comment session. Please give me any kind of feedback that you have, and I hope that I get a like, a share, and a subscribe from all of you who watches this, and multiple views as well. All right, that's it from me. Without further ado, let's get it. COVID-19 from A to Zai Sammy with recent vaccine and coronavirus updates. Part 1. COVID-19, a brief and necessary updated overview. What is COVID-19? Let's talk about the terminology first of all. We will hear these terms used interchangeably, however that is not correct. Coronavirus is a family of viruses that actually contains 30 plus different members of that family. Within that family, SARS-CoV-2 is just one member. It is known as that for severe acute respiratory syndrome and it is a coronavirus and it's the second one that we have discovered that can cause severe acute respiratory syndrome thus it is named SARS-CoV-2 that is the actual virus within the coronavirus family that can cause the disease progression that we know of as COVID-19 that stands for coronavirus disease that we discovered in 2019 how do you actually die from COVID-19 there are multiple ways that you can, including acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is when your alveolar sacs will collapse, COVID-19 induced pneumonia, which is a type of pneumonia you can get from SARS-CoV-2 virus, cytokine storm, which is also known as cytokine response syndrome, cytokine release syndrome, or sometimes hyperimmune release syndrome. You can get different types of cardiopathies or pathologies that occur to the heart. You can get secondary infections, such as pneumonia that is caused by fungi, other viruses, or other bacteria. You can also have end organ damage, like acute lung injury or acute kidney injury. And there are iatrogenic causes, which means causes from actually while you're being treated at the hospital, you can get something. There is something called ventilator-acquired pneumonia, where you actually get pneumonia from the ventilator that they are giving you to help you breathe at the hospital. Here we can see the way that the coronavirus structure looks. It presents with these appendages coming out, as you can see in the top left corner there. Those appendages mimic and look very much like a crown, such as the one that the man in the middle of your screen there is wearing. As we move over to the top right corner, this is a cross section or a cut section of a coronavirus that shows even more how the crown-like appearance can then cause, as you look further down below that image, the two halo-type appearances that we see microscopically. Moving over to the bottom left image, you will see that crowned or halo-type appearance around the coronavirus. This is why it's known as coronavirus. Corona actually means crown. This image is showing you the systemic and the pulmonary circuit or blood flows that we have in our bodies. Notice how we start from the right side of the heart and the right lower ventricle is going to be deoxygenated blue blood. It pumps out to the lungs where it will actually receive oxygen, become red as oxygenated blood. It will then come back to the left atrium, which is the top left part of the heart, flow down to the bottom ventricle, which is the bottom left ventricle there, and then pump out systemically 
to go to all of our organs inside of our body as oxygenated blood that is red through our arteries. Once it dumps off the oxygen at the different organs, then it becomes deoxygenated or blue again. It will travel back through our veins, come in through our right atrium of our heart, flow down to our right ventricle, and pump back out to go to the pulmonary circuit again, meaning it goes to our lungs as blue blood, where it will then turn red again after it picks up the oxygen. This image here is simply showing the way that the alveoli will have the blood vessels around it. Look at the bottom right image there and you will see how a vessel is going around the alveoli or the grape-like structure there and it is blue deoxygenated blood that is dumping off the carbon dioxide from it into our alveolar space while simultaneously picking up the oxygen to change the blood cells from blue to red as it picks up its oxygen to go on through its systemic circuit. Notice that the alveoli look like a bunch of grapes that are there in the bottom left corner with vasculature surrounding it, the blue veins and the red arteries. Remember, arteries, the A can stand for away from the heart. It is taking oxygenated red blood to your organs. After it dumps off the oxygen, it will come back as blue deoxygenated blood through your veins. This image here is showing your bronchi. Your bronchi are merely hollow tubes that go from greatest diameter to smallest diameter as it starts to end and turn into your alveolar sacs. There is no vasculature notice on your bronchi. It is simply hollow tubes for wind conduction. The first time that we encounter vasculature is once it turns into alveolar sacs at the end of those tubes. This image is showing you how the hollow tubes turn into the alveolar sacs which are vasculated and as you can see again in the bottom right corner image there the blue deoxygenated blood will give out the carbon dioxide while simultaneously picking up the oxygen and becoming red oxygenated blood. Here we see a cross section of the alveoli. Notice that there are two types of pneumocytes or lung cells there. The type 2 pneumocytes are the ones that the SARS-CoV-2 virus will actually go into and destroy. It is only 5% of the alveolar surface that we have. That is not very many. Type 2 pneumocytes are responsible for surfactant production. Surfactant is a type of substance that has the consistency of dishwashing liquid or detergent soap and it keeps surface tension on our alveolar spaces which means it keeps them open so we can have breathing to occur. The typical presentation of COVID once we get it is two to four days post exposure. We typically will present with those three symptoms known as fever, cough, and tiredness. Pathognomonic traits and the word pathognomonic simply means you don't always get these traits, but if you get those traits, you can almost always bet that it is COVID. It is SARS-CoV-2 infection, and you're in the, pro the COVID-19 progression. That is loss of taste and loss of smell. Once again, you don't always present with that, but if you present with it, it is almost always COVID-19 progression. Other signs and symptoms you may, that may occur will be typical flu or common cold traits. How does it affect us microscopically? It's going to go into our lungs and it's going to roll across the inner linings of our lungs until their S protein, known as the spike of the coronavirus, once it gets a hold of one of our receptors, then it has like a master lock and key type combination that it will use. Imagine this being akin to um, some type of apartment complex and the apartment owner has a master key that can go through and open any of the door locks. This is the way that coronavirus will hijack our system and use its master lock and key to open up our receptors and then gain entry intracellularly into our pneumocyte type 2 cells. Remember, we have alveolar type 1 pneumocytes and alveolar type 2 pneumocytes. Alveolar type 2 pneumocytes are the ones responsible for surfactant production. Once we lose our surfactant, we start to go into ARDS, acute respiratory distress symptoms. Alveolar 2 type cells have two different types of receptors on their surface. 
ACE receptor 2 and VPAC receptors. The ACE2 receptors are the ones that SARS-CoV-2 will hijack and go inside and destroy. The VPAC receptors are the receptors that receive our VIP, which is a type of protein that is very helpful for fighting against them. As we see here, in the bottom right corner, a collapsed alveoli looks like a raisin. You cannot have adequate oxygen exchange in that. And there on the left of that image, you see normal alveoli that are plump and open like grapes, full grapes. At the top left corner here, we see what it looks like without surfactant and with surfactant. Notice with surfactant, it has proper surface tension and is keeping both alveolar sacs open so that we can have oxygen exchange. It does not matter the size of the alveolar sacs. If the surfactant is there, we can actually have oxygen exchange. This image here is showing how the SARS-CoV-2 virus comes in through our lungs and then it will drop and roll across the interlung membrane or line, inner lining of our lungs until it attaches to a receptor. Once it attaches to a receptor, it then uses its master pick lock so that it can open up the lock and the receptor will then bring it intracellularly into our pneumocyte type 2s. Here we see an image of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. It drops and rolls until it catches a hold of an ACE2 receptor. Then it will use its pick lock with this accessory receptor here, TMPRSS, and the receptor itself actually will portal down intracellularly with the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The SARS-CoV-2 virus will then open up releasing all of its viral proteins so that it can replicate many babies. These thousands of babies will then come out on the other end into our bloodstream via the vasculature surrounding the alveolar sacs. Once again, this image here is a type 2 pneumocyte or alveolar type 2 cell. Okay, the SARS-CoV-2 on this side, just imagine there's an imaginary line right here down the middle. On this side, this is the bronchial airways. It's just hollow tubes but it's the inner lining of our lungs inside the alveoli now, inside this beige box. Once it grabs a hold of an ACE2 receptor, goes into our pneumocyte type 2 cells, replicates itself, then these babies will come out on this side of the cell membrane. This is the vasculature or the actual vessels that are surrounding these alveoli, okay? So now it is blood borne. This is just showing you the pulmonary circuit up close. Remember, deoxygenated blood is the blue. Okay, it's going to come here and it's going to pick up from the alveolar sacs that you see up here, oxygen, and turn red. All right, and now it's oxygenated blood and it's ready to go and pump to the system, the body system. Now that we know the body systemic circuit and the pulmonary circuit, it is easy to see why after coronavirus or SARS-CoV-2 virus in particular causes the destructive lung damage that it causes, it will then go on to cause cardiomyopathies or cardiopathies, which are different types of pathologies of the heart, such as cardiomegaly, because once it leaves the heart, or once it leaves the lungs, excuse me, it will go bloodborne and it will go to our heart next. After our heart, it pumps out through our vasculature causing coagulation of the blood or thickening of the blood because it will start to clump our red blood cells together making our blood more viscous. That makes our heart pump harder because it's harder to pump syrup than water, of course. So therefore when our blood becomes more viscous because of SARS-CoV-2, this is why we start to get vasculopathies and it's important to take antithrombotics and um, anticoagulants and you know that will include different types of medicines including uh, heparin or aspirin or whatever the hospital decides is best for you in your certain condition or situation. This is the SARS-CoV-2 cycle. If you look here we have a pre-symptomatic phase in which if you're around someone who has the SARS-CoV-2 virus and you catch it, when you start counting for your days it's going to be at day zero there when the virus has actually created enough viral load to start causing symptoms. Notice before day zero is the pre-symptomatic phase. So when you start having symptoms, this is when you start counting about having the SARS-CoV-2 virus inside of you. If you notice that's going to rise to its peak about day two, 
So day two to four is really when we're at our most contagious and when we're typically showing the most strong symptoms from having a SARS-CoV-2 infection. It's going to lead on to mild or moderate illness. And about day six right there, day six to day seven is where you have to get those monoclonal antibodies if you're going to get them, okay? And we're going to discuss those in much length at the second video. But if you don't have those by day six or day seven, you're kind of beyond the point for them really helping you. Because at day seven to eight, if you don't have this under control, you're really into that severe illness phase. Now your oxygen level is low, below 94%, and you need to be hospitalized. If you don't get help at that point, now you move on to the next step, which is shortness of breath. After shortness of breath, we start to see type 2 pneumocyte destruction and leading into ARDS, which is acute respiratory distress syndrome. Then once we go on over, we go into the ICU stage, and this is our critical illness phase. This is at about day 10 to day 11, and after that, everything goes downhill, unfortunately. These are the stages of SARS-CoV-2 slash coronavirus, or COVID-19, now that you know the differences in those terminologies. So let's just call this the COVID-19 progression for now. Extracellularly, you're going to have the virus invading your body, and it's going to bounce and drop and roll across the inner surface of your lungs until it can actually catch hold to a receptor, an ACE2 receptor in particular, and then go through the process of endocytosis. This is when the virus gains intracellular access to those type 2 pneumocytes. Then we are going to go to the intracellular processes. At the intracellular processes, we see we have replication, proliferation, programmization, downregulation, signalization, dissemination, coagulation, and finally systemic inflammation. At the replication phase, it produces many, many me's or many babies of itself. And then this is going to proliferate until it starts to use up all the resources within your type 2 pneumocytes. We see an evidence of this because LDH will go up as we see all of the oxygen being depleted by this virus proliferating. LDH is going to be, basically think of it as lactic acid buildup. What happens when you're running or when you use a muscle so much that you use all the oxygen in it? Well, you're going to have lactic acid to build up. And once we have that, then we have what's known as cramps. One way to get rid of that is eating baking soda because that's going to level out or balance out the actual acidity of the lactic acid and produce more oxygen for us. But in this case, there's no help for it. Next, we see the SARS-CoV-2 virus will hack and program our alveolar type 2 cells for apoptosis or cell destruction, where our cells will literally explode once the coronavirus has used up all of the resources inside of it. We also see that it hacks and downregulates the surfactant production of type 2 pneumocytes, all right? And then we see that they will give out this false signal alert, like a Batman call, so that all of our immune defense mechanisms, all of those different proteins and antibodies will come charging over to the site of the action. Then we see dissemination, meaning it's ready to go mobile. In other words, all those babies, as I showed you, are going out extracellularly now from our type 2 pneumocytes and hitching rides onto our red blood vessels until apoptosis happens. Once that happens, then all of the SARS-CoV-2 virus that's there inside of our intracellular area of our lungs is just going to simply go through that portal or that hole opening because the apoptosis has happened. We also have coagulation because since it's causing or making those back calls for all of our different defense mechanisms to come to one location site of action, all of them are going to start to coagulate or become sticky together and clump together. This is why blood clotting is very common with SARS-CoV-2 at its later stages as well. And the blood is not going to be able to move very well. That's going to cause our heart to pump harder because now you have an extremely viscous blood. It becomes syrupy, so to speak. This is why it's important to have aspirin at this stage or, or some type of anticoagulant. 
Furthermore, we see systemic inflammation happening. This is an ominous sign. We notice that there is a direct correlation between the increase of our inflammation markers such as IL-6 and IL-1 or TNF-alpha with the severity of the COVID-19 progression. This is an image that shows just how exacerbated systemic inflammation can really get. If we notice here, we can see that it will affect everything from the vasculature because of the hypoxia, which is going to cause more coagulation, clumping of the red blood cells, harder pumping by the heart, thus causing myocardial injury. Also, the virus will actually start to form different immune complexes as we know them when it starts to aggregate the different antibodies and the platelets and just all of that kind of stickiness things that it can clump together and it starts to get inside the interstitial linings of the lungs and also within the walls of the heart muscles itself um, doing the same thing in the lungs as I said also causing the disruption of the surfactant and the collapsing of the alveoli sacs thus leading to ARDS then we can see that it will start to do the same thing inflaming the walls of the digestive system which will then impede the process of digestion thus causing diarrhea it starts to affect the liver it will start to cause backups in the liver starting to cause um, hepatocellular inflammation itself we now know that um, the COVID-19 progression definitely can affect the brain and the brain cells but more than that of course it's going to affect our central systems in the brain thus causing fever to skyrocket it also is going to cause different disruptions within the lining in the walls of the kidney and cause acute kidney injury itself. And then finally, it's going to also cause microangiopathy, which can then lead to things such as stroke in its later stages. Finally, we get to the critical illness phase. This is not good news, and unfortunately, we're seeing on the upper end of 50% of people who get here not recovering 100% ever. We have extreme hypoxia. We have acute respiratory distress syndrome in its full stages along with some type of pneumonia usually. It can be bacterial, fungi, viral or other, or even just COVID-19 induced pneumonia. We see the cytokine storm happening. We see cardiopathies and vasculopathies in their full effect we're going to cover all of these in the subsequent videos to this series. This image here, if you look at it from A, B, C, and D, I want you to notice what has happened, okay? First, let's look at this large image here on the right. We see that proteinaceous fluid and pus has filled into those alveolar sacs. So how are you going to get any kind of oxygen exchange? You cannot at this point, okay? Because it is fully blocking any of your pneumocytes from being able to exchange any kind of air gases with your vasculature that's on the outside of them. Now, let's look deeper inside of those alveoli at what's happening. When we look at letter A here, we see the death of two of these pneumocytes, right? Now, that death is now going to start to come through and create this decaying of our pneumocytes. When we go to see, we see that we have actual holes or openings now that are there, and this is where through which the proteinaceous fluid will start to flow out, and then this fluid will actually become hard hyaline-like cartilage. Hyaline cartilage is the type of cartilage that we have like at the ends of our noses, all right, and when you feel the ends of your earlobes, for those of us who have hanging earlobes, that's the kind of hyaline cartilage that will start to build there. In other words, it's no bueno for gas exchange. You cannot have oxygen exchange. But what you do have is a type of fluid vehicle now that all of the SARS-CoV-2 virus that had not yet become bloodborne, it can now become bloodborne through those pathways. I want you to look at this alveoli, okay? We're going to look at the diffuse alveolar damage that can be caused in ARDS. The little yellow dots you see coming down the tube there, that's your end stage of your bronchi, okay? Those little yellow dots are the actual SARS-CoV-2 virus. They are going to come into our alveoli, infecting it. 
once they come there to our alveoli, okay, it's going to enlarge or inflame the walls of our alveoli. This is a cross section. In other words, it's like if you imagine cutting yourself in half, into two halves, two equal parts, all right, from front to back. That's how we've done the alveoli here. You see that the walls are becoming a little inflamed, all right? You see the pneumocytes there that look gray and healthy for right now, all right? But you see the inflamed vasculature. Next, you have the thickening of the walls. This is from the inflammation damage and from those bat signals that it sends out like Batman and brings together all of these different types of immune defense mechanisms and proteins. This is not good because it makes it much harder for any oxygen to go through those walls to actually reach those red arteries that you see there. Furthermore, it makes it much harder for those blue veins there, which have much lower pressure than the arteries have, it makes it much harder for them to push the carbon dioxide out through those thicker alveolar walls for gas exchange. So you're going to get a buildup of carbon dioxide and you're going to have a decrease in oxygen influx. Finally, at the later stages here, we see not only the thickening of those walls, but we see these actual holes that are openings. And those openings that we see are going to be permanent wounds that are happening now. You see those blackened dead cells? Those are all become holes and openings. And protonaceous fluid will start to fill up in this, which is like pus. And with all that pus, plus the thickening of the alveolar walls, it's absolutely no way that surfactant can be produced. Number one, the cells that produce it are dead. Number two, even if it does, it just adds to the, the pus and the muck that has filled up the fluid sacs here, all right? And then on top of that, you have no kind of exchange that can happen because all of this pus is blocking the way there. And this is at the end stages of ARDS. At this stage, you're going to see those once happy and open alveolar grape sacs become like dead, dried raisins that just hang there. What we see here in this chart is how there's a direct correlation between the diameter of the largest lung lesions, when we're looking at these lesions here, okay, with the C-reactive protein levels. C-reactive protein is one of the best inflammation markers we have to show when we have an inflammatory process going on inside our bodies. Notice how as it goes from the mild group of the COVID-19 progression to the more critical group, how high the CRP levels rise, also how the diameters of the largest lung lesions are becoming. Both of these two distinguishing marks and characteristics unequivocally can be used to help us know exactly how critical a condition that a person is on that COVID-19 progression. Finally, this is just an image to show you once again how that proteinaceous fluid or protein-rich fluid at its later stages will infiltrate into our alveoli, filling up those air sacs so that we can get absolutely no gas exchange. We have such a hard time with carbon dioxide going out and a very hard time with oxygen coming in. Plus, we have all of these dead structures and cells there with a very thickened wall in the alveoli. We have now ended part one of the three-part series discussing COVID-19. Hi everyone, Dr. Joey here. Thanks so much for watching that video. I hope you really enjoyed it as it's the first part of the three-part series titled COVID-19 from A to Zysami. As I mentioned before, that video is very important because it really covers the spectrum from the beginning to the end of the COVID-19 progression and the next two subsequent videos are going to build on and rely heavily upon the information we just discussed. Please join me tomorrow for the second video titled COVID-19 trials and tribulations the misleading and often misguided path to eua where we're going to really look at all of the drugs that are currently eua approved where they insert in that covid 19 progression what exactly it is that they do and then talk about how zysemi is going to come in and where it will insert and what drugs that i believe that it's going to replace and how i think it's going to really be that breakthrough therapy that we've been hoping for during this whole pandemic and then, of course, the third video called COVID-19, Finding the Cure, is going to be the one where I drop the bombshells I've been talking about, comparing Zysami against Lumab, which is Humanogen's drug candidate that they just recently got declined for an EUA on. And 
let me tell you there is a lot of information I can't wait to share with you on that as I've mentioned to some of you I've had to kind of be restricted on what I said until now but we're going to enjoy the weekend together please feel free to give me a like if you enjoyed the video please feel free to share that video with anyone who you know that might want to learn a little bit more about COVID-19 I tried to make sure I only covered COVID-19 in the first video so it's able to be shared with the masses as I've said but Trust me, these next two videos are going to be something very meaty for all of the investors and all of the people who like the science heavy stuff, okay? Once again, please give me a like, a share, a subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and feel free to drop me a comment, please. I'm going to make sure that I answer all of the comments that are left. Thanks so much for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next time.